Now that we have our GraphQL Spring Boot server up and running, we want to create some integration tests for that. And what we want to do is spin up an in-memory GraphQL server, and then we're going to play in some predefined queries, and then we're going to assert the GraphQL responses against our expected responses, which will be stored on the class path. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing you need to do is pull in the GraphQL Spring Boot starter test dependency. And because we're going to be defining an IT folder inside our sources, you want to come down and here we have a helper plugin for the sources on Source IT Java. And then we also need the integration test plugin, but feel free to grab them from the GitHub. So let's go ahead and create our first uh, GraphQL integration test. So what we want to do is test the bank account query resolver. So if you're familiar with the previous episodes, we have a bank account query resolver. So we call it bank account query resolver test. And instead of test, we call it IT. And here, this is going to be a Spring Boot test. So let's go ahead and just do the normal. And what we want to do is set the web environment to the random port. So it's actually going to spin up the real server and not a mock server. And the class we want to use, of course, is the application class to start. And we will extend this in the middle of the video, and I'll explain why. So here we can go ahead and already auto-wire in the GraphQL test template. And we can use this, this is a utility class, to actually make GraphQL queries to the server, the in-memory server. Let's go ahead and bring in the JUnit 5 test annotation and we'll call this bank accounts are returned. Maybe you can think of a better name than me. Feel free. And so what we want to do here is actually call the server. So we're going to call this method post for resource. And the resource meaning that we're going to load the the file, so this is with the location on the class path of a predefined GraphQL query. So we're going to pass that in. So in order to do that, we need to actually create a file and store it on the class path. And here we're going to save our test name, and this is going to be the name of the file. So we're going to say bank account. So let's go ahead and create some files in here. So I already created a folder structure. We're going to have GraphQL resolver query request. This is where our requests are going to live. So bank account query. And here, this is going to be the expected response. So the matching name, as you can see, query and JSON request response. So now that we have that, what we also want to do is actually define like a constant, which will be the location of where these are. So we say GraphQL query request path. And here we're going to go ahead and grab the path to this. So it's going to be GraphQL resolver query request and then we're going to pass in the name and then we have dot query so if i've done that right or spelt that right then we should have a consistent approach so this way instead of having to redefine these for every test what you can do is just say string dot format pass that guy in and then the test name and that's it. So you can create all of your tests with just this nice one-liner. And of course, we want to do something similar for the response. So this, this is actually going to return a GraphQL response. Oh, so this guy here. Um, this is going to have a status code. So first thing we can do is call our assertions from assert j and assert that this is equal to okay and that should always be true so graphql should always return a 200 for the responses if even if they have errors or if they're successful 
But what we want to do is actually assert on the response body. So we need to get that. So we're going to say expected response body. And that is actually going to live in the bank account.json. So what we need to do is actually load that. So let's create a method called read. That's going to accept in a string. And again, here we can use the GraphQL query response path and pass in the, the test name. And we want to create this read method. So let's call this location. And then here we're going to call create new class path resource from Spring Framework. Pass in the location, get the input stream. And then we're going to pass this into IO utils. So I usually use uh, Apache Commons, but let's just use Micrometer for now. And then we pass in that guy. And then we want to have standard char sets UTF 8. And then we want to propagate that exception. And then we set this to return. So what's wrong with this guy? Oh, sorry. After have to return that string. Okay, so now we have the expected response body. And now what we need to use is the sky screamer, which is assert equals. So let's say assert equals. And then we pass in the expected response body. And then we go ahead and get the actual body. So get the role response, that get body. And then we use true, which is going to be this, the strictness of this. So we call import. And then we pass in skyscreamer JSON assert equals. So this is going to be used to assert two, two JSON payloads equal each other. And you can assert if they're strict, false, or strict, true. So this is a really neat library, one that I like a lot for starting the responses. So let's go ahead and actually dig in and get this done. So last thing we need to actually get is the query and the JSON. So if I switch to the GraphQL playground, these are requests. Let's go ahead and steal that bank account query and dump it in here. And actually let's change it. Instead of dot query, let's change this to dot GraphQL. So we have some IntelliSense highlighting. So here, let's go to QL. And then here, I'm going to strip out these IDs because we don't need dynamic parameters. And what we want to do is pass in the ID directly here. So let's get this guy like that. And then this should is the expected response. This is what we should always see. And then we're going to have to paste it in here. So let's actually go and run our test and see if it, everything's went well or if I've missed something. So it's really, really quite simple. And you should be able to do this really fast. Which And it's super productive because it's going to actually assert the real response of the GraphQL server. So you can be super confident when you're pushing to production that the GraphQL server works. Also, when you're upgrading, you have all these integration tests. So here you can say it actually returned, and if I'm, I'm going to play some breakpoints here. So if I debug it this time, you'll see that the response coming back is going to actually contain the expected data. So here, expected response body. So this is what we expect, and the actual response from the GraphQL server is here and if we want to be sure that it's actually working i can go ahead and put a nice wee breakpoint here and then i can go back i can debug the test again and i will stop here before the test So as you can see, the request came in. I've breakpointed here and then we played through and now we're finished the test. So super, super nice and super easy and quick to do. Now there's one caveat, one thing you should be worried about. What about dynamic fields? So create it on, 
created that. Okay, these return the current uh, local date time and the current date. So if I copy these, create it on and create it out and put them in my query, then there's going to be a bit of a problem because every time we send a request in, the resolver generates it on the fly, meaning that it's always going to change and it's never actually going to be the same value. So how do we fix that? How do we have consistent values? Well, as you can see in my query resolver, I passed in a clock. And the reason I pass in the clock, which is then passed into the zone date time and the local time, is because I purposely can change that clock to a, a fixed clock in my, my J unit tests. So let's actually go ahead and, and do that. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a test setup. So I'm going to create a test application. And in here, I'm going to mark it as configuration. And then I'm going to import the application dot class. So this is going to import the actual GraphQL server, but we're going to add some additional configuration. And we do this up front, so the Spring Boot context does not need to reload between the integration tests. So that makes things super fast. We start the server once, we run all the tests, and then we kill the server. Rather than running a test, adding a mock-in, and then it's going to have to kill the server because it dirties the context, and then redo that. We really, really don't want to do that. So what we want to do is add a beam. We're going to mark this as primary, and this is going to return the clock, which is going to be a test clock. And in here, we can say clock.fixed, and we can say local date time dot off 2020 and then we're going to say yesterday so the 16th and then or sorry that's the, the time so say 10 and then we'll say 17 and then so it's actually local date import the class and then we're going to say dot say at start of day and we want to have UTC, I should have a static import for this. And then we're going to say to instant, and then pass in again UTC. And let's return that. So this is just building a static clock for us. Nothing special. So it's going to be 2020, 10, 17 at the, the, the very first hour. So let's go ahead and switch our IT test to use this setup. Change our imports. And now when we run this test, you should see that the created on will be the, the, the time of the clock, so the 17th. And also the time will be, uh, sorry, I'm going to set that to the 16th the day before. And the time will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So let's go ahead and rerun this. And we're going to have to update this to 16. Okay, so the main difference is we expected 17 because here, but we actually got 16. And it's the same with the time. So let's go ahead and pass this in. And now we can run, rerun the test and it will pass. So you can use these techniques for dynamic values that change, such as UUID, such as clock, time zones, all this kind of good stuff. There's always ways to, to work around that for your tests. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And the last point to me is, if you're creating a server, you really, really need these tests. These are really important from day one. So as soon as you create that server and you have a real API, you need to have these tests also shipping with every version of the product. Therefore, when you make a change to the API, a backwards compatible change, or a backwards not compatible change, you can test the API, make sure it works as expected. Once you bump dependencies, you can also test that your, your client's responses are actually how they're gonna look. So that gives you super, super good confidence that you can make changes and you can go faster because you're so confident in what you can do. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next episode.